So what is going on everyone? Fernando Silva here with another video and with iPadOS 15, Apple Notes actually got a bunch of new updates that I wanted to walk through. But not only that, I wanted to create a video that was from beginning to end, whether it was the first time you ever opened Apple Notes or you've been an Apple Notes user for the last 10 years. I want to create kind of a walkthrough of from beginning to end, how to use Apple Notes, how to get the most out of it, what's new in iPadOS 15. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Fernando Silva and we do a lot of iPad related stuff. And today we're gonna to be going over Apple Notes from beginning to end. Let's get into it. So let's get started with this video, everybody. And to preface everything, I'm gonna talk about the iPad that I have. So I have the M1 12.9 inch baseline iPad Pro. So no data, only Wi-Fi. And to preface this also, these things that I'm gonna be talking about will work with any iPad that you have. Whether it's an entry level iPad for $300 or the most expensive M1 iPad Pro that you can get for like $2,500, all these things are gonna work with Apple Notes. And that's the beauty of iPad OS 15. It doesn't discriminate on how much money you spend on your iPad. So I'm actually gonna take the iPad off the actual Magic Keyboard itself. We're gonna move this to the side and we are going to just go to town on Apple Notes. I will be using the Apple Pencil and I do have a paper-like screen protector on here. These are just things that I like to have. A lot of the stuff you can do on Apple Notes without your Apple Pencil, but to get the best experience, you're gonna wanna get an Apple Pencil to really, really kind of hone in on all the different features that Apple Notes brings. So if we get right into it, here are my Apple Notes. I have it on my dock, as you guys can see. This is what I'm greeted with, right? So the first thing I'm gonna walk you guys through is all the different things that are here and what they're used for. So on the left-hand side, on that big sidebar right there, you have basically how you categorize all your notes, right? All your note folders, how it's saved on your iCloud and things like that. So the first one is Quick Notes, which is new to iPadOS 15. If you're not on iPadOS 15, then you, you will not have this Quick Notes tab quite yet. But then all these other ones are just how, how I categorize everything, right? All iCloud is literally every single note that I've ever taken. Then I have random notes, hashtags, and then YouTube videos ideas that I just have on here. And then I, obviously I script a lot of my stuff or maybe do some talking points, talk about my thumbnails. So this is pretty much where I create all of my ideas, do all my note taking. Every single time I have an idea for a video, I jot it down immediately from my iPhone, and then it populates on my iPad so I can see it the next day. But now to actually get rid of that, all we do is press on this top left button to get rid of that sidebar, and then you have the sidebar inside of that actual folder. So as you can see, I have my YouTube video ideas, and each one of these is a brand new note. That is how Apple Notes is pretty much organized. It's very simple, very intuitive, nothing too crazy. You basically have one main category of sidebars, and then inside of that, you have your actual notes, and then you're good to go, and then you can actually also pin stuff. So if I wanted to pin something, I could just swipe to the left and all of a sudden press on that and now that is pinned on the top so I never have to forget about it because yes, I have over 300 video ideas in here so they do get lost in translation and I do forget about them a lot. So if I wanna search something or pin something, then that's good to go. But now within search, not only can you search actual text that you've typed out onto your notes, but you can also search handwritten text. Now with iPadOS 15, if you have photos in here, you can now search for photos inside of iPadOS 15. So that's a beautiful thing and we'll demo that in a little bit. And then the last thing that I'm going to talk about with this little side view is if you go to the little three dots right here, you can actually view things differently. So you can view it as gallery if you want. So it kind of spreads everything out for you, which I personally don't like. Some people do, but you can also change how big it is. So if I want to make it bigger and see more of my notes, I can do that. Make it smaller. You can also do that. You can view as a list again, which is how I like to view everything. But if we go back into here, these are all the different ones that you have, right? You can add folders, move folders, rename things, view attachments, convert to a smart folder which means use smart folders to automatically organize notes by tags because you can add tags to organize notes and things like that. But if we get out of here, go back to notes. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start a brand new note and walk through all of the features that iPadOS gives Apple Notes. So to start a brand new note, just click on the top right and you're right into the note taking. Now again, I don't have my magic keyboard on so automatically the virtual keyboard gets defaulted into here. So hello, don't forget to sub to the channel, right? So that is a regular note, no big deal. We'll press down here. That's very self-explanatory. But now if you do want to, what I can do is let's say I'm over here, I can click on search and press don't forget to sub, don't forget to sub, search. You can see that now every single time that I wrote don't forget to sub, you can see it right here. So the first one you can see, which is the one we just did, this one was from before, so you can see that it was a handwritten note because it's recognizing don't forget to sub. So that's the beauty of iPadOS 15 with live text search features. So now if we go back to this one, what I'm gonna do is actually full screen it so we get the whole actual canvas. And now I'm gonna walk you guys through some of these icons over here. So this one, very self-explanatory, it's a checklist, right? So if you wanna create a checklist for groceries or anything that you need to do, like don't forget, to upload this video, 
then boom, that's good to go. And if I type a few more, I also love how these checklists automatically kind of get rid of themselves, right? So, so here you can see that I have a bunch of different things that I have to check off. If I press on the first one, enable sorting, it goes to the bottom. So that means that you're done with it. It goes all the way to the bottom because you don't need to worry about it because you were completely done with it. So those are, you know, the checklists and things like that, but it also works as a checklist when like bullet points, right? So indentation, bullet points, you can type this, then tab in, type whatever you want, tab in again, type whatever you want and continue to do that. And also with the smart sorting, what it does is it actually takes that into account, right? So let's say you're working on one big project. If you just finish one of these, then it goes to the bottom of that list, right? Click on that, click on that and here. And then finally, once you're done, then it'll move this entire section to the bottom of your whole list. But that is pretty much all you need to know about checklists. Very self-explanatory, just create checklists for yourself and it does follow the design language and follows pretty much all the rules that you're used to with Apple Notes. The next icon that we have right here is a camera icon. So if we press here, there's a couple things that you can do, right? You can scan a document, you can take a photo or choose a photo. So if you wanna choose a photo, let's pick this one because I'm, this is something that I've been working on, a little thumbnail for later. You can see that it's right here. And then once it's on here, you can view it like a normal image, right? You can just click on it. You can annotate it if you want. So you can do one of these. You can click on here, right wherever you want, say hello. And then it saves everything, you press done. And then on your note itself, you can see that it's been changed. But now it doesn't change the actual image in your photo library. It just changes the image inside of notes itself. And you can just hold it down and then that has its own options, right? So you can copy it, you can share it normally, right? So you can resave the image with that new edition of the text that you added. And you basically have all the different share options that you would want. But then also something that's new is the small images. So if you have a large image in your notes and it's taking up way too much space inside of your notes, you just press small images. And then lastly, you can see that you can actually just delete this image altogether. But if I go back into the camera, the next thing you can do is actually take an actual photo. So you can just grab this, take a photo of what we see right here, pull it down, press use photo, hold this down to enlarge that image and boom, there it is, all good to go. And then lastly with the camera, you can also scan documents, which I don't have any documents around me, but it's very simple. It basically just like highlights something. As you can see, it's trying to highlight my desk mat, but it's not gonna be able to do that and then you get a PDF image of exactly what you scanned. And it's actually very, very accurate. And this feature has completely gotten rid of any third-party applications that I've ever used to scan documents. And now the next option right here is actually the pencil button, right? There's a couple of ways to actually activate this. So if we get out of here right now, we're in typing mode. But if you wanna get a drawing mode, you just tap on the actual screen itself with your Apple Pencil and you're in full-on drawing mode, right? But at the same time, if you wanna get out of here, you just press on this button and you're back, back into typing mode, as you can see. So again, this video is for people that have real beginners that aren't really used to Apple Notes, that just got an iPad, that just got their Apple Pencil. So all the different things that are awesome about the Apple Pencil are gonna be awesome on, again, the first iPad, the Apple Pencil Gen 1, Apple Pencil Gen 2, your iPad Air 4, your, you know, your 2018 iPad Pro. The experience is gonna be pretty much identical, except for, yes, you get a little bit less latency on the new Apple Pencils, I think it's like nine milliseconds, but you're really, really not gonna notice anything. I promise you, you will not notice anything. But now with the Apple Pencil, you have a bunch of different, I guess, pencil types to actually write with, right? So the first one we're gonna talk about is this A1. So this one's relatively new, it wasn't here from all the time. So basically, if you press this button down and hold that pencil and just say hello, it's gonna try to recognize that and then type it out for you. So it's basically scribble. Hello, how are you? So you type anywhere on the screen or you write anywhere on the screen, you get paper-like, because it just makes the experience that much better, even though I can't even spell that correctly. But you can see that with Scribble, that functionality came into play. So that's what that A is there for. Basically that it automatically turns your written words into text. And then you have the actual pen, right? So here, if you click on the actual on every single other stylus, you'll be able to change how thick the actual writing is, right? So if I wanna to go to the smallest one, say hello again, it's like that. If I wanna go on the biggest one, say hello, as you can see, it's huge. And you can even change the opacity. So if I wanna do hello and have it be a little bit see-through, then I can also do that. And then it also works as a marker because if you continue to redraw over things, they get darker and darker and darker and darker. So I kind of like that functionality from these Apple Pencils. And then again, you have a highlighter, you have a scribble tool, which is just kind of like a, an actual crayon or a colored pencil, I think is the equivalent that I would use. And again, you can change the thickness and even with the pencil on how you hold it, right? So if I hold it straight down, you get this. And if I hold it sideways, you get this. So it works as if it is a freaking uh, actual colored pencil because if you use the point of a pencil it's gonna be a lot more circular it's gonna be a lot more I guess pointy is a word or I guess the, the amount of pixels in there is gonna be smaller and if you use the side of the pencil it's gonna be more of a shade right so again all these cool things are happening I don't even know how Apple's doing it it's just amazing and then double tap on the pencil to get the eraser and to start erasing everything and then another cool one that I use actually a lot for my thumbnails is this ruler because this ruler allows you to draw perfectly straight lines with no problem and then so you basically line it up you use two fingers to 
figure out what exactly angle you want this in. So if I want it at 24 degrees, and then I go here, and it gives me a straight line. And the thing is that the Apple Pencil kind of knows that you're trying to actually draw a line, right? So if I'm over here, it's drawing whatever, and then I get close to here, it knows that I'm drawing a line. Like, look how perfect that is. If I try to recreate that line, I can't do it, right? No matter what. So that's what the ruler is there for. And I love the ruler because, again, it helps me to, like, underline my words, makes my thumbnails pop a little bit more. And it's a feature that people forget about. Like, I finalize my YouTube thumbnails through the regular Photos app because I use the ruler to underline a lot of stuff. And then here you have your actual color palette, so your main colors and then your color wheel. You also have the ability to do find your color like this. So if I want this color right here, it'll find it for me, no big deal. You can go from the spectrum, slider. So you, if you need to find a specific color, you're gonna be able to find that color on this iPad through your notes app. And then lastly, right here, if you press on these three dots, you have the ability to auto minimize. So when you start writing, it goes away. And then here to draw with your finger. So I do have the ability to draw with my finger if I really wanted to. So if I go here, as you can see, this is my finger, right? Apple pencil right here, and I'm just drawing circles. So you do have the ability to do that, even though again, I do think that you're gonna get the best experience with an Apple Pencil, but if you use your finger, it'll still work. And then you have your pencil settings, which will go into settings real quick, which allows you to customize what you wanna do with it, right? So basically you can decide with a double tap on, do you want it to do switch between current tool and eraser, current tool and last use, show the color palette, or totally off. You can actually default to only drawing with the Apple Pencil, you have scribble turned on, and all that good stuff. And now again, there's a couple other features that came with iPadOS 14, which are very overlooked. So now with iPadOS 14, you have the ability to create perfect shapes, right? Because before, if I tried to draw a circle, it would just be like that. But now if I draw and hold, it'll complete that circle for me. Like here, you can see triangle, no good. But if I draw a triangle, but if I try to draw a triangle and hold it, then boom, now it's a perfect triangle with straight lines. Same with a square, as you can see, not that good, but a square, then I hold it perfect square or perfect rectangle at that point. So that's awesome to have. So that ability is cool and it works. It doesn't only work with shapes, it works with straight lines. So you can see if I draw that, that's not straight, but if I draw this and hold it down, boom, I have a straight line. So that works with a lot of shapes. So another thing I will try with the star. So if I do one of these, this is the ultimate test, boom. And you can see a perfect star. And then one cool thing that came with the iPad OS 15 update is this idea that we can now highlight not only text, but also highlight these shapes. So if I double tap on the circle, you can actually grab this and move it around to wherever you want to move it, which is something that was not around before. You can even click on it, you can copy it, you can click anywhere else, and then paste, and then you can see that that's where the circle is, I can put it wherever I want. So this is something that wasn't around before. You can see that I could try to highlight as much stuff as I possibly can, and then I can move them to wherever I want to move them. So that's what's awesome about Apple Notes. That came with iPadOS 15, it's a beautiful thing. And again, I'm gonna show you guys how that works with actual text. So if I wanna actually use this new feature, so I'm gonna grab the pencil, we're gonna say, like this video. So that's normal, and then we get rid of the pencil, so we click back up here on the top right, and now we highlight this, right? So if we hold this, move it over, highlight the entire word, or the entire phrase, we can copy as text, and then click down here, and then paste. And again, you can copy it, but not only paste it as the actual scribble that it actually is, but then also actually paste it as live text. So it's text that's turned into, again, what I just showed you. And then another few things that go undetected with Apple Notes is if you click on these three dots again, and you go into line and grids, you can actually change exactly what you're looking at. So for the most part, you get a blank canvas, no lines, nothing. And the reason my canvas is black with white ink is because I have dark mode on. If I get out of here and turn dark mode off, then all of a sudden now I have black ink with a white background. But I kind of just like the dark mode because it's not in my face as much. But again, if you click on the three dots, you can actually go to lines and grids and do whatever rule you want. So you have this one, you have the ability to go even thicker. So again, you can see, so you can go like college ruled if you want, and then you can even add actual graph grid lines, which is what I loved in high school. Like every single notebook I had, had grid lines because I was just, I was very anal when it came to organizing my math equation. So like every square would be one variable or one number and I would just kind of follow that path. But again, I love how Apple did include this and it's a beautiful thing. But that is pretty much everything on the actual Notes app itself. It's very, very cool, very easy to use. Again, everything that you do on the iPad is gonna show up on your iPhone, on your Mac, I think on your Apple Watch. Don't quote me on that. I don't know if there's a Notes app on the Apple Watch. But again, it's, it just works so seamlessly. And yes, I know that there's applications that do this already in terms of collaboration. If you're in the Apple world, you're not gonna beat this ecosystem. But there's a couple other things that I did wanna show you in here. So you can actually lock a note with a password, which is something that's very cool. So if you do have a note that you don't want anybody to touch, like you have a great idea and you wrote it down last night, but you don't want anybody to get into it, you just lock it with a password. And then you also have the ability to now share a note and work collaboratively, right? So 
Share this note with others and everyone will see the latest changes. Hello, don't forget to sub the channel. So you can share it however you want. You can share it with a link, via text, via email. You can share it to non-Apple users too. So that's a beautiful thing that Apple's not discriminating there. And then the last thing that came up is actually on the home screen. It is called a quick note. So to illustrate this, we're gonna go into Safari. Let's go into, I don't know, let's go to ESPN.com, see what's going on. Congrats to the Bucks. I know Brian Tong is happy about that. He was watching the Bucks and he was rooting for them. So shout out to him as well. But now what you can do is with your pencil and even with your finger, right? So if you don't have a pencil, you can still use your finger, but on the bottom right hand side, you can pull up and get a quick note. So if I want to create a brand new one, you click on here. If I want to add this link, I can't. So we'll add this ESPN link. But not only that, what I want to do is actually grab this and move it over here. So next time I'm around, all I have to do is click on that and I'm good to go. And another beautiful thing about this is that I think this is kind of foreshadowing what floating windows might be like, because you can see we can move it around, we can throw it over here, we can make it smaller, we can make it bigger, right? So I think this is what's foreshadowing what we might get from a floating window design moving forward. And then to get out of here, just swipe up and you can see that it is right here still, so you can pull it wherever you want, but you can also just get rid of it and then press done. But then we'll go into the notes again. You, like you guys saw in the very beginning, we have, do have quick notes. We'll click on the quick notes. And now I'll click on here and I'm transported exactly to where I need to be. But that is basically everything from Apple Notes, everything that you would need to know, whether you're a beginner, whether you're new, whether you're on iPadOS 14, iPadOS 15, whether you're on a 10 year old iPad or a brand new one, these are all the basics. And I was hoping somebody learned at least one new thing from Apple Notes, but let's get out of this view and go to the normal view. And that's pretty much gonna do it, everybody. Like you saw, Apple Notes has gotten better and better as the years went on. This year, we got a bunch of collaboration stuff, so I think it's trying to compete with those other collaboration softwares like Microsoft, like the whole Google Suite. I honestly don't think it's there from a professional standpoint quite yet, but if you're a personal user, if you use it every single day and you want your stuff to be in all of your devices at the same time, pretty much in real time, then Apple Notes is gonna be the best way to go, especially if you have your Mac, your iPad, you know, your iPhone, Apple Watch, any other Apple product with a screen, you pretty much are gonna be able to rely on those notes and get your notes wherever you are. And that's why I love Apple Notes. And yes, a lot of other applications do that, but the fact that Apple Notes is native to the operating system, native to Apple itself, it just works a little bit better in that, in that regard. So like I said, overall, I love Apple Notes. It's my personal note taker of choice. From a collaboration standpoint, I use other ones just because my teams are using you know, either Microsoft or Google. But outside of that, from personal use, Apple Notes is the way that I always go. But that's gonna do it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Comment down below. What notes application do you use the most? Is it Apple Notes? Do you use Notability? Do you use something from the Microsoft suite or the Google suite? I'm always curious to find out a little bit more. But like I said, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. And until next time, check out channel sponsor Paperlike. Check out Tiny Rigs. Peace.